Cody should be joining us shortly. We've been, Cody and I have been planning this for a long time, trying to figure out how we could both get on here and, and uh, talk. So it's one of the reasons why I rented this new office and then uh, so I could have a faster internet connection so I could do this sort of thing. And then uh, him and I have some really in-depth conversations about dogs, pot liquors, running dogs, hunting lions, hunting uh, bobcats, the differences between where he hunts and where I hunt. And uh, so, yeah, so we thought, man, we need to we need to get together and just record this live one of these times. Oh, he just sent me a text that he's late. Leave it to a South Texas bobcat hunter to be late. Let me know if you guys like for us to do this kind of thing or like for me to do this kind of thing. There's a there's a lot of guys, younger guys that I could get to do the live streams with me probably. Uh, the older lion hunter guys, you know, it's all I can do to get them to just let me sit down and interview them, you know, either on video or uh, just the audio for the for the podcast. For those that don't know, I, I provide content for the W Supply podcast. And right now I've been real busy working. So what I did is I purchased the digital rights to the Dale Lee CDs from Dale's nephew. And then I, uh, I gave them to W Supply to, to, to make them into a podcast. And uh, I, got, I got one sponsor, Value Pack Dog Food. Uh, they came, came through and sponsored the podcast. And, and, you know, even before any of that had happened, I would kind of had a run in with one of the big dog food companies and uh, Value Pack had contacted me. Not only that, but Otis Llewellyn, a really good houndsman, he had contacted me and, and, and told me, he said, man, you need to feed the Value Pack. It's good dog food. So now I've been feeding it for a little over a month and uh, I do, I like it. And they sponsor the, the podcast. So that's really cool. So if you guys have a value pack dealer in your area and you, you know I, like i said in in the podcast i think we need to support the companies that support what we do there we go here's cody coming on there he hey. is you're late man i know i know, I know. I, 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 uh, something, something happened, happened to, to the, the internet, internet. <laughs> in my hair Man, if I worried about the way my hair looked, I would never get on camera. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right. right. <laughs> anyway, this is Cody King. Him and I started talking a long time ago. And uh, he hunts bobcats, has running walkers. Uh, as far as I can tell, as good as they come. And uh, we, discuss, we always discussing the differences between the hounds and the locations and everything, but... So now, Cody, let us know, how'd you get started? What's your story? Well, well it, uh, it's, it's not, not a very, very interesting, interesting story, story, but, but I, uh, my, my dad, dad hunted, hunted hogs, hogs when he was, was younger, younger, and he... Uh, uh, let me see, I got a problem with your... Uh, someone said we're echoing. Let me see what I can do. So where were we? Where did Cody come from? How did Cody get started? That way... That way everybody won't be here for the boring part. Uh, no, my dad, my dad hunted hogs uh, when he was younger. And when I was probably five or six years old, uh, he, he started back to hog hunting with me and my, and my brother. And uh, we hunted hogs for forever. But, uh, uh, but now I just started out hog hunting and uh you know when i was probably 22 23 years old i i wanted to kill a mountain lion and uh i went and that's how i met reuben lossman my brother was a game warden there in alice and uh, he took me and introduced me to reuben and reuben said if, if you want to go hunting he, we won't catch a mountain lion but i'll take you bobcat hunting be here at four o'clock tomorrow morning I was there waiting on him. Uh, we went hunting, caught a caught a bobcat, and and I came home with two dogs. And that's <laughs> that's how I got started cat hunting. Well, well, when you you and your dad were hog hunting, what what kind of dogs did you use doing that? Pretty much strictly black mouth curs. 
we had a few leopard dogs. Uh, never had, we never had very good luck with leopard dogs. It just, I'm sure there's great ones out there. We just never had one. We had all black mouths. Do you, did we they had, cat? Did they catch or just bay? No, they caught. We had catch dogs too, but them cur dogs, they they bay up a little bit on a big hog. But once them once them bulldogs caught, them them cur dogs would catch too. And then we kind of phased out of catch dogs because the cur dogs caught so well. And uh, but we hog hunted a we hog hunted a lot. We caught a lot of them, and that was. You know, I live in as far south in Texas as you can go in a place called the Rio Grande Valley. And I mean, I was 20 years old before I knew other people hog hunted. And there's just there wasn't many hunters down here. So it uh, but we 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 caught a bunch of them hunted mostly grain fields, you know, summertime hunting. But we hunted the brush a little bit, too. So what? Why did what made you want to catch a, a lion? How did how did that? You see a picture or something somewhere, or somebody talked to you about? Yeah, it? just seeing you know seeing pictures of them and videos of them on TV, and and uh, I wanted to catch one, and I went and met Ruben, and Ruben actually uh, Ruben actually had a trainer lion in the pen, and <laughs> he you know when when I went to see him and and. Uh, he said, "If you wanna, if you wanna catch one, it'd be a lot. To train some dogs up and catch it yourself." And he, I got the short end of that stick. It was, it'd been a lot easier just to pay somebody to take me and be done with it. But <laughs> it, uh, but that's I just fascinated. I've always been fascinated with cats. There was an old man that cat hunted down here. His name was Norman Davidson, and I was. I was really good friends with him. I, I knew him my whole life. And, uh, you know, I, I, I knew it was hard, you know, I, I, you know, when you're young and stupid, you just, you want to do something because everybody says it's hard. And, uh, but it took a, took a long time to be able to catch cats consistently by myself though. Those two dogs that you got from Ruben, were they, were they finished dogs or? <laughs> Just no, one of them was, one of them was a probably a fifteen-month-old dog named Goober, and one of them was a three-month-old pup named Bruno, and uh, you know nowhere nowhere near finished. But uh, you know when I came home with them, I started hunting with Reuben, and and uh, I hunted at least two days a week with Reuben, probably for five, six, seven years. So he let you and, run run those young dogs with his dogs. Correct. Yeah. Ruben's Ruben trained me and Ruben's dogs trained my dogs. And we had a, we had a lot of fun. So how long was it before you caught a cat without Ruben? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, whenever I was going to go hunting by myself, Ruben would loan me a dog sometimes. Oh, wow. Uh, but it was, I bet it was two years before I caught a cat by myself. And, uh, but 95% of the time I hunted with Reuben and we'd catch one every morning, at least if we didn't catch two, we were disappointed. But that, that, that point in time, Reuben had by far the best pack of cat dogs I've ever seen. Really? Well, yeah, they were, they were, they, were, they made it look easy for sure. And all, and all running walkers. Yeah. You know, I, I, uh, I call them South Texas running walkers. Um, you know, nobody has any papers on them. And I, I, I'd be willing to bet that a lot of them had some pot liquor mixed in them 50 years ago, you know. But uh, for the most part, they're what you would consider a running walker. Did, yes, sir. Did they, did they line breed them or did they just breed best to best? Or, or I mean, did they breed outside of their... I mean, if they seen a good dog somewhere, would they take and go breed to it or, or just bred out of their own? Yeah. Life? When you, uh, when you see, uh, when you listen to a lot of the stories, you know, when you start looking into the bloodlines of these old dogs and stuff and it's, it's, you know, uh, for example, uh, you know, Reuben, 
I got a dog named Jade and, you know, she was out of Ruben's Ruger dog who was out of doc and, and, uh, but doc was out of Robbie Hertz's good dog yeller. You know, they're always, they Real just close. It seemed to me that they all talked and, and they pretty much tried to breed best to best. Yeah. You know, somebody had an exceptional dog. Everybody knew about it and, and everybody tried to try to breed to him. Did Ruben have, I mean, I'm sure he, what was his exceptional dog? What, one that you really remember that was just outstanding. When I started hunting with Ruben, Ruben had five dogs that were, I mean, he had more than five dogs, he had, but he had five dogs that were probably all five individually better than anything I have. He had Doc and Benny and Beulah and Pearl and Cisco. And uh, those were, those were cat dogs, but that doc dog or Rubens, that was, he was something special. Just, well, I know you've talked, I mean, you talk about jump dogs and, and I mean, when you talk about one like that, is it just one that does it all? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was one of those dogs, you know, of course this was back before GPS collars, but uh, you know, he was one of them dogs we'd go off hunting and we'd catch a cat and we'd go to the tree and where's doc and Ruben go get his beat beat collar out and, and look around and he'd be treed over there two, three miles. You know, I mean, he caught a lot of cats by himself a lot. And just go catch one. Cold, yeah. He cold, cold trail. I mean, a good dog like that in that country. Is he, is it necessary for him to do much cold trailing? Oh yeah. Yeah. He would, he would start a lot of the cats. He was cat minded. You know, that, that dog would, uh, you wouldn't see him when you were hunting. He'd hunt. And then it was really cool because in his later life, I had a GPS collar and I used to put him on, on dock and, you know, you could just watch, you know, if you could look at a topo map, and if you were to draw a picture, you know, draw a line where you thought cats would be in the brush, whether it be a draw or a creek or a thicket, uh, you know, that's exactly where Doc would go hunting. He was he was just one of those dogs that was smart enough to just go find to figure it. And that's why we caught so many cats. You know, it, it's pretty bad down here, uh, especially this time of year. You know, the cats aren't moving right now. You know, half the cats are laid up with kittens and. And half, and you know, and the toms are lazy, and it's hot, and, and you know they don't move around as much as they do when it's cooler. But with Doc, it didn't matter. You know, he he went and found them. But them dogs are, them dogs are pretty special. Now I hear you. You've mentioned. I, I know I've talked about this. The sh shadow shadow bred dogs or shadow shadow dogs. bred, yeah. And they all go Doc. back to. Doc wasn't a shadow bred dog, but. Uh, Cisco and, and Pearl were, I mean, no, not Pearl, Cisco and, and Lady and, and, uh, Shadow was a dog that, uh, there's an old hunter. In fact, he still hunts. He's like 93 years old. His name's Boo Kemp. I've heard of him. And, yeah. He's, uh, up around Divine somewhere south of San Antonio. I don't, I don't really know where he lives. I've only met him a, a few times recently, but. He had that shadow dog, but Boo was Boo was pretty known for. Uh, he caught quite a few lions. He did he did a pretty extensive lion study with uh, with some biologists down here, and I guess is in the nineties. And uh, evidently, that that shadow dog really really liked the lion from from the stories, and, and that, that's kind of where that shadow dog got popular. Yeah. I'd there was a guy who had contacted me. I can't remember the name right now, which or who it was about going and talking to, and, and sitting down and talking to, to boot camp. And uh, he's he, a character. He, he'd be fun to talk to. He's got some stories for sure. Oh, I'd like to, I'd like to, I, I'd have to ride my mules and take off about six months early now because of the price of fuel. But Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> that's, that's no joke. You know, anyway. a lot of them, a lot of them, uh, you know, a lot of hunters, you know, I'm a recreational hunter, but you know, some of them lion hunters that 
do it for a living got to be got to be hurting right now with gas and diesel as expensive as it is yeah cost a lot of money 156 dollars for me to fill up my truck the other day yeah that's crazy yeah uh, in, in a year so let's talk about the lions then so <laughs> you said you're fascinated with hunting lions you started hunting bobcats when was it you caught your first lion um i caught a couple of lions uh with my first pack of dogs um but i never caught a big lion i, I caught a kitten and and uh and then i caught a you know a pretty young kitten it wasn't a kitten but uh probably 40 45 pounds something like that and then i caught a big lion in wyoming but not with my dogs oh and you then, went with somebody up there yeah i uh i went with some amish people and uh <laughs> it was a it was a pretty fun hunt amish people yeah. with hounds huh yeah yeah they had good hounds too big old blue ticks but they weighed 100 pounds i'll be dang I'll yeah be so when you caught your your lions you were you were probably cat hunting weren't you and just yeah I, I used to go lion hunting all the time and that's all it was was lion hunting you know I I, I people call me and see them in black panthers and <laughs> and all that good stuff and and you know when you're young you you load up and drop whatever you're doing and go to all that stuff you don't you don't have to be young to do that I was no. old and I did that <laughs> and, and uh but I tell you what though I I wasted my time a lot these bobcat dogs, uh, and it, it took seeing a lion uh, to figure it out. But I mean, I was I was roading the dogs, and a, a guy had called me and said he had seen a lion. And I was roading the dogs, and one of my dogs kind of bucked up in the road, and stuck his stuck his hair up, and and uh, fella shined the spotlight over there, and there was a lion standing there, and. Uh, that lion took off and them dogs wouldn't run it. It wasn't a bobcat. They were straight and straight bobcat dogs. You know, I had a lot of people tell me that a cat's a cat and all this, and that's not the case. I can attest to that. And it was embarrassing. I got on my knees and begged and prayed and pleaded. And did you, did you and open up? Did I did everything I possibly could. You barked and on I, the track. I, I had a dog named named uh, Tiny that was a very playful dog, and I got to playing with her and clapping, and she jumped up on my chest and barked one time, not barking at the cat, barking at me, playing with me. <laughs> and when she barked, all them other dogs came to her, put their nose on the ground, and took off and caught that line. Oh, no kidding. No, nobody wanted to be first. Nobody wanted to be they first. Were, they were afraid of the wrath. Yeah. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't a bobcat. And, but I'll tell you something that a lot of old timers uh, also told me. Um, I, had, I had quite a few old timers tell me that it, if, your lion, if your dog will run a house cat, it'll run a lion. And my dogs never would run house cats. You know, I'd be hunting on these drain ditches and stuff, and I'd see them, and they wouldn't run them. And uh, sometimes I'd even try to get them to run them, you know, just being bored and see a house cat run across the road and they never would run them. Huh. And after I caught a few lions, them dogs started treeing those house cats that they okay. never would mess with before. But yeah, them dogs would, would tree a house cat if I ran across one hunting after I caught a few lions. But before I, before I caught a few lions, they never would run them house cats. And that's the truth. I. You know the <clears throat> you've told the story before but in one of the videos when i went down there and hunted with you guys but i mean it's such a unique story tell us about your first pack of dogs and and the sad story that happened with them it uh i was hunting uh i was hunting down on the river and uh south of donna and I don't know, it was probably one or two o'clock in the morning. And I was trailing a cat 
and the dogs slowly came in. We didn't didn't catch the cat, and uh, I get mad thinking about it. But uh, anyways, I had a I had a, a young dog. In fact, a young dog that I named Shadow. Uh, uh, that I really liked and he didn't come in. But when my dogs had come in, I had let the tailgate down on my truck and there was a berm of dirt uh, on a kind of an edge of a drain ditch on some farmland. And I backed my tailgate uh, and, you know, kind of rammed my tailgate into that berm of dirt so it would be pretty easy to load the dogs. And... Uh, Shadow didn't come in. I was waiting for Shadow and waiting for Shadow. And I finally just laid down in the front seat of my truck and, and fell asleep. And about 5.30 in the morning, I heard Shadow barking. And I, I got up and I, I got out of my truck. And some of this I learned later, but there was a pump down on the river that they irrigated with. And there was an electric line that serviced that pump and that line was down. And when that shadow dog was running, he, he ran into that power line that was down and it, you know, killed him instantly. And when that power line broke, it burned in two when he hit it, it, it fell. And that everywhere that line would hit the ground, it would blow up, make sparks like you never imagined and big loud bangs. And, but it did it in sequence. You know, it would hit the ground and burn in two and then it would hit the ground and burn in two. And it, from, from where that shadow dog was, it just went boom, 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 boom. And that line landed right on top of my truck and electrocuted every dog in it. And uh, if he'd have ran into that line, Two minutes earlier, I'd have been laying in that truck, and I don't know what would have happened with me inside that truck, but it was it was close. What? So and, you were standing out away from there? Yeah, I was probably, you know, twenty five feet, and I was down on the river. It was five o'clock in the morning. It was dark. You you don't expect stuff like that when that. And them sparks started flying and and the, and the banging and I thought somebody was shooting at me and uh, I didn't I mean it, it took me a while to figure out you know what it, I just woke up sure. and but it was bad but when I reference my first pack of dogs or my second pack of dogs that's that's why they 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 got electrocuted how long did it take and and I quit hunting I quit hunting for several years. I, it was, I think that was in 2013 and I probably started hunting again in 2016. So it was three, three or four years before I decided so you, I wanted to hunt again. When you started hunting again, did you go back to Reuben to get your dogs? Uh, yeah, yeah. It, uh, I, 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 I got, uh, there was another guy, uh, it kind of didn't work out very good for him, but there was a, I had quit hunting, so Reuben didn't have anybody to hunt with, and there was a guy that managed a, man, a ranch up there named Rick Forrester, and uh, in fact, his son is Lane Forrester, Rick who's Forrester. a lion hunting in, in, yeah. in your country. Yeah, yeah. I've heard And uh, Rick had started hunting with Reuben, and Rick had a few dogs. And Rick quit his job and moved back to New Mexico. And when he did, he sold me all his, you know, he sold me, I think, three dogs, four dogs, something like that. And that's, that's how I got started. And then two or three months later, the gentleman that took his place uh, had a big accident and Rick had to come back. So now Rick's still in South Texas and he had to put a pack of cat dogs together again. And, uh, that's why I say it didn't work out too good for him, but it uh, it it worked out it worked out pretty good for me. So they, I mean, and he had some finished dogs in that group or in that what you've got. There, I wouldn't say there was there was one dog that there was one dog named Steve that was probably, you know, 
a, a, as finished as he was going to get. He was a pretty good dog. And, you know, and I built my pack around him. And then I don't know if you remember Dace Atkinson that yeah, you, you hunted with us when you were down the last time. Him and his dad, uh, I sold them Steve, and they built a pack around him. And, uh, you know, he, he was a he was a good enough dog for three different people to do that. So Yeah, you bet. You bet. But, uh, main thing, he was broke. And that's, you know, that's one of the hardest things in – Especially broke, in this broke, country. Broke. What's that? <laughs> What's that? He says. <laughs> five five year old dogs ain't broke sometimes. Oh, I got some that are broke, but they're dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, once they die, they don't bark on trash no more. No, they don't. So, and you talk about Norman, we've talked about Norman Davidson a lot. I mean, one of the things that's always fascinated me about some of those old timers is you told me that. Norman Davidson hunted every day until he was what? From the, what age until what age? Till he was 90, if not 90, close. It, uh, I think he was 92 when he died, something like that. And he probably hadn't had a dog for two years, maybe three, but he hunted every morning, every morning, rain, he, snow, shine, every morning. And he'd run coyotes and bobcats whatever huh yeah he, he ran coyotes and bobcats with the same hounds Obviously. and uh, he had he had some pretty good dogs i bet and but he never i think i think he liked running coyotes more just cuz it was a longer race but because he ran coyotes he never would he never could hunt with anybody else you know I mean, he'd go with you but he couldn't take his dogs because you know they were in coyotes but yeah he hunted he hunted like reuben you know he didn't he hunt, he actually did hunt every morning reuben didn't hunt every morning but uh you know a lot of them guys that hunt you know a lot like that they'll go out and hunt for three or four hours and you know call it quits but they do it every day. Every day. How did he yeah. get by the heat in the summertime? I, he used to always tell me, you know, I'd see him at the coffee shop. And he'd say, you've been hunting, Cody? He called me Fireball. He didn't call me Cody. He'd say, Fireball, you've been hunting? I'd say, no, Mr. Davidson, it's too hot. He said, you know it's hot on them cats too, don't you? And that'd be the end of it right there. <laughs> but He'd tell me that a million times, you know, he ain't an excuse. It's just as hot on those, on the cats as it is the dogs is what he'd always say. So the pack of dogs that you have now, are they bred or they're more or less bred the same as the ones you had to start with? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I've got, you know, I've got some that are very closely related. How do you compare this pack with that? with your old pack when i first got started back uh i had some dogs that were good dogs they weren't as good as my first pack and i've raised some dogs now and these you know some of these dogs have got some age on them and uh, but i've got the best pack of dogs right now that i've ever had they're 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 quite a bit better than the first pack of dogs that I had. Well, you caught like 70-something bobcats last year, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I don't remember exactly how many, 72 or 76 or something like that. But And six or seven lions, something like that? Seven lions, I think it was. And, uh, But that's, you know, on one hand, you can say, I caught all those cats because I got better dogs, but in my opinion, I got better dogs because I caught all those cats, you know. One goes with the other. Yeah, and it's just a butterfly effect, you know. You start catching more and having more success. You start having a little more fun. You start going more often. Then you start going more often. You start catching more cats, and, and uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a snowball. It, sure. it, one leads to the other, that's for sure. I mean, if, if you were to take the greatest hunters in South Texas and 
line them up from best to worst, I bet the number of hours in the woods would directly correlate with with, oh, with that yeah. number as well. Oh yeah, they, the guys who hunt the most have the best dogs. I mean, that's it's just the the way it is. How I mean, typically, if you want to go catch a bobcat, I mean, if you're going to go bobcat hunting, how far do you have to drive? I could turn them loose in my driveway. I mean, I I I, I mean, I could not drive at all. I mean, I've caught cats here, and that's you know that's one benefit that I have. You know, there's hunters like Joe Bob James and Rick James and 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 Royce Blosky. I talked to Royce today. You know. The, the, the biggest, you know, the biggest obstacle that those guys have is, you know, they've got to drive several hours just to get to cat country. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and that's a, that's a pretty big obstacle and just not as, not as fortunate to live, you know, in, in the country that I do. And it makes a, it makes a difference. And like you said earlier, it makes a big, big difference when gas is $5 a gallon. Oh man! You start talking about having a, you know, Derek Edwards, uh, cat hunter from up around Dallas, Fort Worth. He drives to Oklahoma every every weekend, and uh, just to go cat hunting. I mean, that's six, seven, eight hours round trip just to go, just to go cat hunting, and does it every weekend. You know, and guys like me or you get to walk outside and start hunt. That's a that's a pretty big advantage right there in itself. Yeah. Well, I mean. When I lived up on the mountain, I mean, I treed lions and a lot of bears within a half a mile of my camp right there. And I was spoiled, you know, I just, and lazy. You just get where you could just go out, you know, I'd saddle a mule right there and I could just go straight on out. Well, now down here where I'm at, I sure, I can hunt right from my house, but it's not the best hunting in the world. <laughs> Chuck. Chuck down there just put in one of my biggest advantages is I have damn ricochet. Chuck's a, a what's turned into a very good friend of mine from Georgia. And uh, but he was down here deer hunting and he he killed the I'm not even gonna say how big the deer was because it ought to be illegal for people to kill deer that big. But he, he killed this giant deer on on the first day of his hunt and he was bored and didn't want didn't have anything to do. So he called me up and, and one of the guides knew me and wanted to go cat hunting and and took him out the first night. We didn't we didn't catch anything. And he he called me back and said, I want to come back and do it again. I want to catch one. So he came back down and went hunting from us. And and when uh, when he got here the second time, he brought a friend of his and we were just loading up to go hunting on the first night and he looked over at his buddy and said, now you're just going to have to deal with him all night long screaming, God damn you ricochet. He said, he says, all I do is cuss at my cuss at ricochet. And, uh, he, he went back home and a couple weeks later I got a package in the mail and he got me a dog collar for ricochet. It says, God damn you ricochet. <laughs> and, old, old Tom and Chuck got a pretty good kick out of, out of me and trashy ricochet going around and around. That's for sure. <laughs> but oh, me. so what, okay. With your, with your experience, have you had much experience with pot lickers? What we call pot lickers. So those <coughs> oh, just, a pot liquor is really just basically a tree dog. I mean, not a run and walker, but a tree dog. Anything that's not a running walker, we call a pot liquor. Well, except, you know, like Julys and stuff like that. They're still running dogs, right? Yeah. Yeah. That is correct. But oh, I did. So earlier, I told you that uh, when I would go hunting by myself, a lot of times Reuben would loan me a dog. And Reuben had a dog named Beulah that was one quarter blue tick and three quarter running walker. And pretty blue tick looking, but, uh, and she did it all. And she was an exceptional tree dog, but she did it all. And Reuben used to loan her to me quite a bit. You know, if I was taking somebody hunting that, uh, that I really wanted to catch a cat for, he'd, he'd tell me, well, take Beulah home. If you're going to take your dad hunting next week, you know, take Beulah with you. And so in my older age, I wanted to, 
to try to replicate that. So I got some some blue ticks, and I looked a long time, a long time. I, I bet I talked to a hundred different people all across the country, and I finally settled on some. I finally settled on some blue ticks uh, out of Colorado. Come from a guy named Scott Young with uh, Rocky Mountain Blue Ticks, and uh, I I bought a pair of them, and they were three months old when I bought them, and I raised them till they were a year and a half, maybe two years old, before I decided they were good enough to to breed to. You know that I liked them enough, so I have had you know a little bit of experience. And then you loaned me Dan. Uh, I had Dan the man, your dog down here, till I got him killed by uh, Havilands. But uh, but other than that, that's that's about the extent of it. The, uh, the blue ticks that you had, what I mean, what kind of differences did you see between them and your running walkers? Not much, not much, and uh, they were mouthier. Yeah. You know, they, they barked too much. And uh, even even Dan, and I liked Dan. I liked Dan a lot. Uh, but we would hit cold trails that were uncatchable, uh, or, you know, basically uncatchable. And, you know, my dogs couldn't even bark on it. They would just barely wiggle and barely wiggle. And, but Dan would bark on it, and those blue ticks were the same way. You know, they they now they had some things in them that I didn't like. Uh, you know, them them blue ticks like barking, going to a dog. You know, if they were in pretty thick, br- especially in thick brush. You know, the dogs would have trouble getting through that thick brush, and it would frustrate them. They'd want to get there so bad, so they bark going to another dog, and I really I really don't like that. And, uh, you know, but, uh, but I mean, they are colder nose. There's, there's no doubt about that, but I, you know, I just, I, I really think that there's not a need for that colder nose. Uh, I, not, you know, not when you have bobcats right out your back door. <laughs> that's exactly right. You know, we hit a cold track and the dogs can't trail it up. Ruben used to say, come on, honk, come on, let's go find another one, you know? And, uh, you know, y'all don't have that privilege where you're from. That's a little bit different situation. If you find a lion track, you, you better stick with it, you know, because it's probably the only one you're going to find. You know, when I was first looking for dogs, I had talked to several people. And that was one of the things they told me. They said, well, there's two, there's, you know, two schools of thought. You know, you you get a, some hotter nosed dogs. And I know a lot of guys, I you know, Warner Glenn is one that said it. He said, uh. He said, you know, back a long time ago, we had those real cold nosed dogs. He said, we did a lot of trailing and we didn't do a lot of catching, though. And I think if you're in an area that has a real good population of, of your whatever, you know, your lions or whatever, then you probably would be better off to have a fast walking mule and some hotter nosed dogs and make bigger circles. I know in that in that thesis that Roy McBride wrote, which I haven't sent to you uh, yet, but eventually I will. We're, we'll get together eventually, but uh, you know, when he hunted West Texas desert country, you know, not as not as crappy as the country where you know they're around your house, but you know, as similar as you're going to get, I guess. And uh, um. But in his thesis, he said it lion track needed to be four to six hours old to catch it. I think, yeah. And he hunted with a lot of running dogs. You know, I think he had both. I don't know exactly what all he had, so I probably shouldn't be talking. But I know he had some running dogs. Yeah, I, no, I, I, I've heard a lot of guys say that. You know, those guys who run those cameras uh, over in Arizona, I've heard them say that, you know, you just – to catch a uh, – a lion, you know, that's older than four hours, you start to track older than four hours that you just, you know, you're too far behind. But there's so many things that can happen. I think if you're on a, you know, especially if you're on a nice Tom and you're trailing and you can stay out there and stay on him, well, eventually he's going to, he's going to lay up somewhere or he's going to make a kill or he's going to do something that's going to allow you to catch up. Now, if you have the time to stay out there and stay after him, you know, most guys nowadays, 
And that's what I was told, you know, when I, when I first started, I asked, I said, what's the difference between these old lion hunters and the guys we got now? And, you know, like, like me, and I said, well, those old timers, they could just stay out there. They could lay out on a track and they would just stay after them, stay after them until they get, get them caught and, uh, shoot us, you know, you got to go out and hunt for a day, two days, and then I got to go to work. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, it, it's tough, you know, and, and I used to kind of always joke with a lion hunter from West Texas named Ty Vick. They're around Van Horn, he's around Alpine now, but, you know, I'd go up and stay with him and we'd hunt a few days and, and uh, it's tough country. You know, it's very easy for, it's, it's very easy for somebody that doesn't hunt that country to have an idea of what it should be like. And it's not. And I used to go up there with hunt with Ty and we'd go hunting and hunting and never start nothing. And, and I'd say, God dang, we ought to catch one with a cur dog as many miles as we've rode, you know, but that's, 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 that's tough. That's tough country. It's, it's just a different world. And if you, if you don't hunt there and your dogs don't hunt there and you're, you, you you're, you're not going to have much success. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. I mean, I, I've struggled out here in this desert for the last five or six years, you know, and uh, I've caught a couple of lions, but not many. And it, it's, it, it can be, I, you know, I say frustrating, but it, you start second guessing yourself. You start second guessing what you got. You caught some lions just the other day. I caught one lion three times. One lion three times. <laughs> hey, a lion's a lion. You're not yeah. supposed to give out those details. <laughs> no, I caught one lion three times, and she was a female that was about to starve to death. I felt sorry for her, but I've been after her. Yeah. I, you know, I'd like to make up the story that that that's the same lion I've been trailing around for the last five or six years. You know, because that's that same range of mountains back in there. And, and I knew she was staying right there. If you watch the video, I made that video and, and, uh, I was going down there, not every day, but I was going down there fairly, you know, often because there was, there, the river wasn't running, but there was pools of water in the river. And, uh, so I got to go down there and, you know, and run the dogs and not worry about them, you know, drying out and heat stroking. And, and we trailed her up into some bluffs, I don't know, three, four times, something like that. And we'd get up there and run out of, you know, run out of cool weather. It'd get hot and the dogs would start shading up and, and you get in those bluffs. It's just tough, you know. And and finally, one evening I was down there. I just took the dogs down there and kind of rode them down the river. And I found her track. And she was going down into, she was down by the side of the river where, uh, where I knew I could catch her if I got the dogs on her. And sure enough, I got went down there early the next morning. I treat her, and uh, then I, of course, I didn't want to waste a lion because they're kind of hard to come by. So, man, I took those dogs back, and I got some more dogs when we came down there, and, and we ran her, and we caught her about I don't know about a half a mile down the river again, and, and then uh, I got to looking at her and felt sorry for her. You know, she just she was starving, is what she was. She'd killed a skunk. And it, it killed a bird. I found some bird feathers around there and she was starving to death. And uh, not only was she old and we're supposed to find out how old she was, but uh, she had had some kind of accident. Her teeth were all gone out of her mouth. And uh, so I called a buddy of mine. I got, I, you know, I'm, I'm not real big on, on shooting them myself. And, and uh, I called a buddy of mine, Robert, and, and I said, hey, why don't you, you know, if you have a lion tag, you want to go down with me tomorrow morning? And and uh, we'll see if we can catch her again. I don't think she's going to go very far. And sure enough, we we went down there and we treat her again. And he went ahead and and put her out of her misery, basically. You did her a favor. Yes, yeah, we that, did. When you sent me a picture of her of her mouth open, I mean, she. I don't think she could kill anything other than a bird or maybe a rat. You know, if she was. It was that was a that was a good. You did her a face. She was fixing to have a hard summer in front of her. Yeah, she wasn't going to live. I don't think she was going to live another month. I just, I don't. Let's see if this happens. Cody, I'm going to leave this to you for a minute. Answer some uh, questions. Can you see me at all? No, I can't see you. Okay. Answer some questions. 
Let me look through here and see some questions. I know Manu Garcia was asking about some dogs. Uh, we don't, I don't have any, uh, uh, I don't have any straight blue ticks. Uh, but uh, we've got some uh, half and halves and then quarter blue tick, three quarter running walker. Me and, me and Brett have been uh, kind of working on crossing some dogs up. And in fact, I, I was just fixing to ask him, he's got a dog named Jack that I gave him that, that uh, that's half blue tick and half running walker. And he had him on those lions the other day. But me and me and Brett are fixing to have some some puppies that we're crossing up. In fact, his pups uh, they'll be three quarter pot liquor and one quarter running walker. They ought to be born any day if they haven't already. I will ask him when he comes back. But it uh, for heartworm prevention, I use Ivamec. It, uh, I generally give them two tenths of a cc every month. What are the puppies you have out of? The puppies that I have now, uh, let me think, what puppies do I have now? Uh, so I've, I've, got, I've got a puppy. I've got a pair of pups uh, that are out of Jesse, and she came – uh, she came from Mexico, but she originally came from Dace Atkinson, and uh, she's she's part pot liquor. And then uh, the other puppies that I got are uh, they're running they're running dogs. Cody, what's the difference between running and tree and walker? Uh, you know, that's, that's a very good question that I can't answer because I, 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 I've never been around tree and walker. I had a tree and walker one time. They're, they're, they're built different. Uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of the people will tell you that them running walkers don't want tree or don't want a tree. And, and a lot of them don't, you know, that are bred for coyote pin hunting and, registered dogs with papers but that's not a that's not a problem that we have uh you know these dogs uh these dogs uh sorry i'm reading comments and losing my train of thought but these these south texas running dogs they don't have no problem treating and that's that's why i say i wouldn't be surprised if if they uh you know, had some pot liquor mixed in them years and years ago. There's no telling what them old timers mixed in them dogs. Man who knows, I used just two tenths of a CC for a 50 pound dog. And uh, you got to be real careful with that Ivamec. You can burn their kidneys up. Oh. I've never used big beagles, but I've had some dogs, uh, Bruno. Uh, my old brag dog and then Sweetie, they were litter mates. They were a quarter beagle. They came from Danny Kilgore up around Victoria. And, uh, um, you know, they, they, they were quarter beagles, but I've never used any, any whole beagles. I mean, you definitely could, and you, you could probably catch some cats with a pack of beagles. It may take a little longer, but, uh, it, Cleve and Becky Dwyer, they're crossing beagles into their lion hounds. Yeah, I mean, I was just saying, I mean, one of the best pair of dogs I've ever owned were, were quarter beagle. Really? Yeah. When you watch, I mean, when I watch them, you know, when they're running those rabbits, man, they have a really neat track style. I mean, and they're, they get after it. Yeah, it's, it, I I tell you, it looks fun too. You know, yeah, I've never I watched videos of it, and they they got good mouths. Yes, they they, they got real good mouths, and they're 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 fun to listen to. I've always wanted to to listen to a pack of rabbit dogs. So I just I never have. There used yeah, to be a, a friend of mine that that 
oh, he, I say a friend of mine, he was an internet acquaintance <clears throat> and he used to make some YouTube videos and they would have those roads or whatever they call them, those big rows up there. And man, you could hear those little dogs just balling and working. Then you could watch the, the, on the video, you could see the rabbit come out and go across the, the road. And then here come those little dogs just working in and out like that. And then want to get over there and find it. Wah! And there they went. I was, it was good watching. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. I've watched quite a few videos on them and, uh, it, it like I said, I, I, I bet you could, I bet you could, uh, could catch some bobcats with some beagles if you just had beagles yeah. ralph donahoe uh out in kenton texas he had a few beagles little bitty old beagles them little things didn't that they weren't 13 14 15 inches tall and uh he, they 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 catch all he left he let them run loose and he'd catch all kinds of stuff with them that's who i got my first set of dogs from well i say my first set I bought both. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. You got some dogs from Ralph Donahoe. In fact, I knew those dogs a little bit when you got them. I had hunted with them uh, or, you know, seen them a little bit because of Ty. Ty Vick and Ralph Donahoe were pretty good buddies. Yeah. that <clears throat> uh, David Heiss is the one. I I had a, a four-wheeler that I owned, a, and I sold it, and I had a bunch of cash in my pocket. And David told me, he said, man, he said, this guy, he was having his knees operated on, I guess, and he couldn't hunt anymore. And uh, and I don't know if he was leaving that ranch or not, but I went down there and bought Bo and Susie and Blackie and Trip and Solo. And it was a it was a wreck after that. And that was Texas Bo, right? Colorado Bo, I believe. Big white dog. Colorado Bo. Yeah, Colorado. But there was two of them bow dogs. Yeah, there was, there was a, uh, and I think this was Colorado bow, and and uh, he was he went back to Van Johnson's old blue dog. He was out of dog out of a dog named Sob or S O B or whatever you want to call it, which stood for Son of Blue. And uh, you know, it's kind of a strange story. I was talking to Van Johnson the other day, and and see. Solo was out of Bo and Susie. And I always attributed Solo's uh, cold nose and his ability to trail to Susie because Susie was a really, really good cold trailing dog. You know, she was, it was a terrible tree dog, but she was a good, good trail dog. And so I was talking to Van Johnson and, and, and Lily was a cross between Solo. I crossed Solo to Lily and I produced a bunch of these hounds that these guys you know, went out and caught a lot of lions with. And anyway, Lily was out of a dog named Repeat. And they all go back to that old blue dog of Van Johnson's. And come to find out, Van Johnson told me that that old blue dog, either him or that blue dog's daddy, I think it was him, came from from uh, down in southern Arizona, which was huh. kind, of, kind of strange story, you know. Yeah, you start... You start getting hounds, and the world gets a little smaller. Uh, you know, you'd be, be surprised. You know how many. You know, you'd go hunting with Ty Vick, and he'd talk about. Yeah, you know he'd he'd talk about hunting with Henry McIntyre and his flag dog, and it came from Henry Beatrick. And then you go looking, and you're like, oh well, that's that dog's. You know parents were litter mates or something you know it's a, the south texas bobcat hounds is a pretty small world well flag and easy they were brothers and full and they were running walkers and then newt was a pot licker and that those were henry's dogs yeah he yeah caught a lot of lions didn't he yeah he, he caught a he caught a bunch of them. I think he caught like 349 lions, I believe it was. And did you ever talk to him about running walkers and pot liquors? No. Uh, me and Ty, Ty took me by there. Ty hunted with him. 
and uh, Ty took me by there to visit with him one day when we were coming back from hunting, and we just we stopped by his place there just to BS. He was in he was in pretty rough shape by the by the time I met him. Yeah, last and, time I seen him, he wasn't he wasn't in real good shape. Yeah, he uh, yeah he was in he was in pretty bad shape. But I did talk to him for a little bit. I, I, you know, he. I think it was 349. I hope I'm not wrong on that. But he, I think I asked him how many lions he caught, and he, you know, you couldn't understand him when he was talking, but he said 349. And uh, Ty kind of looked down at him and said, I bet you'd sure like to catch 350, wouldn't you, Henry? And he said, yep. And that old man on his deathbed, look up and say, well yeah when i get healed up i'm gonna catch you. 350 i'm gonna catch you. you know there wasn't no i'm done to him he's when he when he healed up when his legs healed up he was gonna go hunt and uh you know he 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 did it till the end and say he was another one of those that probably hunted most every day yeah yeah he was he was a tough old man so let's talk about that uh What's the Mexican man down in Mexico that that's that's caught lots of lions and has been hunting for a long time? Luis Chapa. And he's on a big ranch down there. Or? No, he's he's all over down there. I mean, he's a he's he's a lion hunter. That's what he does for a living. He, uh, you know, he 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 travels. He travels all over, you know, hunting predator predator. Uh, uh, nuisance lions. Okay. Predation lions. And let's and, tell, let's tell the story about about your cross, the blue tick with the running walker. So I crossed once those blue ticks. I was June and July a pair of a, a pair of dogs that I got from Colorado, and and uh, they both got killed by rattlesnakes, but. Uh, I crossed June to my ricochet dog and got some half blue tick, half running walker pups. And I, I was trying to replicate that Beulah dog of Reuben, so I didn't, I didn't want any half bred pups. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that I could get my hands on them. I needed to cross them again, you know, so I, I gave some of them to some friends of mine in Mexico, and I gave one of them to you and uh, that dog you called Jack. And uh, but anyways, to make a long story short, uh, those guys from Mexico that I, I, I gave those pups to, they really liked them. And that guy was kind of partnered up with, with Luis Chapo and some dogs and, and they really liked them. They originally started them out trailing wounded deer and, uh, and then they were doing so good that Mr. Chapo put them on some lions. And now it's my understanding they, they do both, you know, they'll go find wounded deer with them and, and run lions with them. But, uh, Luis Chapa crossed Tina, which is the half ricochet, half blue tick, with his Canelo dog, which is his brag dog at the time. That's a running dog. And uh, so that, so these pups that I have now are one quarter blue tick and three quarter running walker. And uh, just started them. I got a, I got a pair. I kept them. He gave me. Mr. Choppa gave me a pair of them, and uh, one of them I call Beulah, and the other one's yours. I haven't named it yet, so you, I'll say, let you name it. But. I was going to say, let's don't forget that one of those are mine. <laughs> yeah, and the worst, the worst part is, is that I've started yours, and uh, and it's doing really, really good. I mean, the 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 first. Uh, the first cat I took it on, it ran every step of the race. I don't, I, don't, I should have sent you that video. 
uh, to play in. Yeah. I sent you all the irrelevant ones, but I could have sent you one to that that dog of yours running a cat. Chamoy, yeah, Tate, Tate, uh, Tate calls your dog Chamoy. I don't know. Chimoy. I don't know where he got that name. So Tate Scott's in the in the comment section here. He's a, he's a young kid that's 21, 22 years old, and he's been hunting with me, pretty much my hunting partner since he was 15, 16 years old. And and uh, he 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 spends a lot of time with the dogs and and you know one of the few people that I mean he comes to my house and picks the dogs up and takes them hunt. You know okay. he's been with me a lot. He knows what he's doing and. And, uh, uh, but I forgot he, he dubbed your dog Chamoy. So Chamoy, I, Chamoy. I don't know. It's I, a Mexican I, candy is what it is. It's a candy. It's a Mexican candy. Yeah. Well, but, I don't believe in changing a dog's name. <laughs> there ain't nobody called her that, but Tate. So that dog and Tate are both about on the same mental level. So. You take that for what it's worth. <laughs> I'm sure he appreciates I, hearing that. <laughs> I, I give him I give him a lot of hell, but me uh he's he's me and Tate spent a lot of hours hunting together. And we load up and go to Mexico and he's he's caught several lions with me and and uh we've we've we spent a lot of time hunting. We caught a lot of cats. Tell tell me a couple stories about your lion hunting. Now how the lions that you've caught have you been able to do a lot of cold trailing with them? On some of them, Have uh, you? Uh, we caught. Uh, you know, of course, you know, one of them was we were looking at the cat and the dogs wouldn't run it, so that trail wasn't very old. <laughs> and uh, but I've been cold trailing some recently. In fact, I trailed the line, you know, just the other day for a pretty long time. Did you? And. You know, and that's one thing is, is I've caught more cats. Uh, my dogs are, you know, they're, they're, they, they cold trail them more, you know, than they used to. And I think it's just, they've finally gotten comfortable enough with them that, uh, you know, they really like them. And, you know, when you catch a lion and you're excited and especially down here, uh, you know, never caught a lion or, or you haven't caught one in years and Tate never caught a lion and we catch one. We, you know, we shoot it and, and, uh, these ranchers want them dead. That's the only reason sure. they even let us hunt them. You know, they, they called us cause they have a problem. And, uh, you know, then after you catch a few, then you tree them and then you jump them out instead of shooting them, you know, and let them dogs run them again. And, and it, it's, it starts making them a little more uh, lion-minded. And I hunted a lot with, with Clinto Brown, who's a, a, a cat hunter from southwest Texas, I guess. And phenomenal dogs, one of the best hunters that there's left, you know, with a lot of the old timers that have passed away and, and, or, or retired hunting, uh, you know, Clinto's definitely one of the best and that and that goes back to hours in the woods he don't do nothing but hunt and it you know and hunting with him a bunch his dogs really helped mine get you know where they'd like a lion and, and uh but we caught a we caught one lion one day that was probably 50 pounds you know young lion and a tom and we jumped it out of the tree i don't know if i sent you a video that lion jumping out of that tree it was that 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 lion and the lion jumped out of the tree on its on its own and when we were walking up there and it, they ran it for another few minutes and it treed again and this time when it treed again we looked over and there was another lion in the tree the dogs were treeing one and there was a second lion in the tree and they were litter mates. And, uh, you know, and the owner of the ranch was there and they, you know, they wanted them lions dead. They were killing some pinned deer and, uh, the, the owner shot the, 
shot the line and you know we hip hop parade and high fived and pretty excited and we left we went to another ranch to go hunting and hell that evening we kind of all looked at each other and said man that female's got to be around there somewhere you know those kittens still with her mama and we went all the way back and that lion we cold trailed it a pretty good ways they trailed on it and trailed on it and trailed on it and and uh you know they they cold trailed that one for a, for a long ways so a lot you, of them that I, a lot of them i had caught they didn't cold trail very long but they did that one so do you think <clears throat> do you think now that you've caught some lions your dogs will leave a cold track on a lion to to run a hot bobcat um yeah yeah i, I mean i I've, I've i've had it happen have you i've had it happen yeah it uh you know they they were and i know they were cold treading the line because i found the track you know but it was cold 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 and uh you know just barely hitting it and, and that's you know that's that's one of the problems down here you know is there's a thousand bobcats for every lion and, and uh it's it's hard to go you know i tell people all the time i just go uh just go bobcat hunting and if you catch a lion you catch a lion that's pretty much all you can do yeah there's probably a lot of down here you know or well not down here because coon hunts kind of hard down here but further north i imagine that they probably catch as many lions coon hunting as just about anybody you know out there on the river at night because it's always been a natural travel way yeah they uh but and it's and it's you know and it's been pretty cool to watch my dogs progress from you know not wanting to run a line because it was trash to to cold trailing one you know that that's that's pretty old and that's that's been pretty exciting to watch oh yeah and you know i'm a bobcat hunter i'm not a lion hunter and a lion is a novelty to me and you know, I've caught several a year for the last few years. I think we caught seven last year, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's still a novelty, you know, lions far and few in between. I mean, there's a lot of them. There's just so much more country, you know, this big country and, well, yeah, and the, uh, uh, the density, they're not, there's a, there's a lot of lions, but the density is not, they're not all packed in small places. Yeah. Yeah. And I got, the, you know, when it comes to lion hunting, I got the same problem we talked about earlier. I mean, I got to drive at least three hours to go where there's consistently going to be a lion. They, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of lion hunters here are well, most of them that, that especially the ones who outfit or guide, you know, they'll, they'll break their dogs off of bobcats because you just have such a hard time catching a bobcat in this country. And then you'll end up messing around. You know, you might cross, you know, three or four bobcat tracks time you get to a lion track. And then you spend all day messing around in a rock pile somewhere looking for them. And, and you never yeah. get to that lion track. Yeah, and, I, and I've hunted out there in West Texas. And them, them, them bobcats are just hard to catch. I mean, I've taken some pretty, pretty damn good bobcat dogs out there. And, it, it, it's it's you know they can be caught in perfect conditions but i mean it, it's pretty tough i mean oh, yeah. i don't i don't think you'd have much success at, at at being a bobcat hunter in west texas and desert new mexico and if you are you're going to have a lot better dogs than i do yeah i don't That's, know how you do it i mean just due to the fact that from what i can tell that you know because of the brush and 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 the, and and the the humidity i mean a lot of those guys I've, I've heard you know you texans talk about you know you're dry but dad gum you're not dry like we're dry yeah i, I mean we get you know nine inches of rain a year and uh, it, we, we've been we've been dry you know i mean and, and and you know especially some of that country i hunt in mexico i mean they've had I mean, we finally had some rain the other day, but I mean, they had like two or three inches for the last three years. I mean, really, sixty percent of the mesquite brush died, but that's not the norm. You're always that dry, you know. I mean, was there still brush? Was there still some underbrush? 
I mean, a bunch of it died, you know, really? and it, it take decades to come back. You know, yeah. it, it was it's terrible. I, I mean, we I've heard people talk about differentiating between like a dry ground, dry ground and bare ground. Yeah, because I mean, we can, <clears throat> we can trail an old track on those rocks. I mean, that, the rock holds scent really well. Yeah. You just can't move those tracks very well. It, it, you know, those dogs, they don't have any way to pick their head up and go. No, that's, that's, it's, it's tough. That country where you live is, is, is it's about as bad as it gets, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, there's a reason why there's nobody else hunting in this country. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, it's some of this country, uh, you know, it's bad, bad drive, but at least we know that's not normal. And it's eventually someday it'll, it'll change. Well, I remember when I, of course, I don't know what time, I can't remember what time of year it was, but we, uh, when I slept out there, when I camped out there by Rubens and, uh, man, I woke up the next morning, everything I had was soaking wet. I mean, just soaking wet. It, it was like it here, like it had rained two inches, but it was just dew, you know, just, yeah. Just, just do. I don't want to hit it, but everything, everything is soaking wet. I mean, the amount of dew that comes in is unbelievable. And they say it's dry now. They say, oh yeah, it's so dry. But I mean, everything I have. Heck in New Mexico, we'd call that a rain. <laughs> yeah, and that, that, that saves us a bunch, you know, is what, when it gets real dry like that is a lot of times you'll have 80, you may not have a dew, but you'll have 80, 90% humidity in the mornings and, it, you know, at least stand a, stand a chance. That helps. But, yeah. You know, if you're in that bare ground conditions and it's 15% humidity, I mean, you're, you're wasting your time. It's, anyway. It's back to jack and the the the, the I, it's always fascinated me that's one of the reasons me and cody had kind of got together is, is i asked that's one of the questions i ask all the old time lion hunters and everybody i talk to a lot of guys that, that won't interview that they won't sit down and interview but i ask them about the running dogs the running walkers you get all kinds of uh answers i mean from some of the old time dry ground lion hunters, they, they have no use for the running walkers. And then you got some of the guys that said, you know, I've heard guys say, well, they won't you hardly hunt a pot liquor anymore. And uh, then you got guys like, well, there's a USDA uh, hunter up, up north who runs some uh, part running dog, part some of his old stuff. And, and he'll sit there and tell you, he said, oh, you know, he told me about how many lions he caught last year and he, and some stuff but he also said then he said oh the, these are good dogs he said but they're not as good as my old dogs were whatever that means yeah but I've a big a big problem with the running walkers um is the coyote pins and yeah. i'm not taking away anything from coyote pins but they like a different type of dog mm -hmm. and you know, they don't want it to trail. They, you know, they know the coyotes are in the pen. They don't want it to spend time trailing. They want it to just run around in circles and find one. They don't need it to tree. So a lot of that's been bred out of them, you know, and, and, uh, so, you, you know, just because it's a running walker doesn't, exactly. doesn't mean it's, it's the one you want, you know, and that's kind of the conclu yeah. conclusion I came to. You know, I think a lot of guys would get, you know, a run and walker out of, like you said, that, you know, that that's a pin dog and, and been bred that way for years. And, and, uh, they just don't work like, like, like what you have down there. And so I've got that Jack dog. Now you've got some three quarter running dog quarter tree dog. And I took Jack because my best trail dog is P and, uh, she's nine years old. So I bred Jack to pee. So they're going to be three-quarter tree dog or dry ground lion hound. I don't like to call them tree dog because then 
<laughs> I mean, they're, these are dogs that have been bred to be dry ground lion hounds, and they probably might even have some running walker back in them somewhere. Who knows? I got a pup out there out of pee now that has a flag tail. And, uh, but anyway, so I bred Jack to pee, and uh, she had five pups. <clears throat> they're just now opening their eyes a little bit. And uh, I got a friend of mine that's going to take one, and then Cody and I are going to split the other. See what, I, you know, raise two of them running bobcats and then me raise two of them doing what I do and then kind of mix and match and see what happens. Well, and, and you know, one thing that me and Brett are going to try to do as well is, is take, you know, what benefits that we can from each other. And, you know, you start taking a, eight month old pup, however old they are when you like to start them. And, you know, you take them bobcat hunting once a week for a month and catch four five, six bobcats with them. That does a world of good for a young dog. That's, that's getting started versus trying to take that dog to where you live. You know, although it seems lately you catch a line every day, but, <laughs> Same. Uh, you know, that's, 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 that's tough to start young dogs where, where, you know, where you don't catch a lot of game. No. And, uh, you know, if we take, take some of them pups, at, you know, that kind of the best of both worlds, you know, pups that, you know, taking dogs that I think a lot about and taking dogs that you think a lot about crossing them up, you know, and starting them, starting them in South Texas and putting some cats on them, getting them cat minded and then send them to you to, to the kind of, you know, see a line and, and learn the trail. I, I think it'll be a, I think it'll be a pretty good deal. Well, and that was kind of our, <clears throat> although Dan wasn't a puppy, but I mean, our plan with Dan was I took, took him down there with you. Cause I, I mean, honestly, I'd, I, I had a guy that was trying that dog out and he said he was worthless. Matter of fact, when I look back on it now, I kind of get, I don't know, I'd like to see him face to face because he, he told me he was worthless. Said he, and when I got him, he just had him tied up between two buildings out there and his feet were soft and everything. Because I, I drove up there and got him the next day. And then I got, well, I caught that Tom Lyon after I got back. And I sat there and listened to him pick up loses and cold trail all day that day before. And then I went down. And, and I gave him to you and I, no, yeah, I gave him to you and said, man, try this dog out for me. Maybe I misread him. Maybe he was just hitching a ride with Booger all this time. And, uh, and you called yeah. me back two days later. That dog came to South Texas and country that he'd never been in full of prickly pear and thorns and, and, uh, you know, and I even kind of rolled my eyes a little bit. You know, when you sent him down here, I was like, what What the hell do you want to find out if someone done told you he's worthless, you know? And uh, and I, I, I can remember the first time I took him hunting. I took him, we were over on Delta Lake. And them old dogs of mine went to whipping on a, on a cat. And Dan opened up and he went with him every step of the way. And he would, you know, that 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 dog ran and, and knew strange country i mean like he was raised here and i you know i i don't i can't attest to what someone else would say or think or why but I, what that dog was it was not worthless i can tell you that much for sure yeah i mean i, I, mean, I was kind of grand and treed and caught and fought and he did it all with me while i had him and he was trashy i mean i, I admit he was trashy i mean i uh, that's something I have to deal with quite a bit because I don't catch enough game. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's the, should we take some, you want to answer some questions or do you already answer everybody's questions? I answered some, I mean, I, I, I if anybody's got some, we'll, I'll definitely. Yeah. Cause it's, and it's eight o'clock. I'm an old man. It's getting close to my bedtime. Yeah. It's nine o'clock here. Then you, both of us must be full of it. Sit and talk that long. I'm just, I'm just listening. You just directed, huh? Yeah, I just, I like to ask questions. 
Well, I was figuring but yeah, if anybody has any questions, I'll, I'll, I'll answer them. People were asking questions earlier, but I don't know how to go back. I'm afraid if I touch this computer, it won't work anymore. Uh, I can go back and see what I can pull up here. There's Chuck talking about hunting with him when he was when he was down hunting with me. He was in some of those pictures I had sent you earlier. Uh, we caught four cats in four days of hunt. It was pretty. It was pretty good. Pretty good hunt. Tate is the best dog you have. <laughs> the trashy. Yeah, Chuck and Chuck and Tom said they were going to get me a tr a shock collar to put around Tate because he needed <laughs> one too. It uh, down here, uh, a lot of the times, it's all private land. It's not like where you live, you know. And I mean, if you get unlucky and start a cat on the fence line, and I mean, if you either going to go trespassing. Or you're going to stop your dogs, one of the two. You yeah. know, I mean, if you don't have permission to be there, it's, I mean, there, there's only two options. And so I'm pretty good at turning those cats back when they get on them fence lines. You know, I run up and down the fence clapping my hands, and, <laughs> and Tate has learned how to do it. And, but Tate does it with a lot more enthusiasm than I do. And, and we was, we were running a cat and, and Chuck and Tom were there, and all of a sudden we look over and Tate swinging with his leg, trying to kick this bobcat back in the brush as it runs between his legs. And he misses, goes flying. Cat goes through the fence. And I told Tate, I said, "Stop the dogs! Stop the dogs!" And you know, Tate was already mad at that cat. I, there wasn't going to be no stopping the dogs. And. and uh, I, I had sent the game warden a text message and asked him earlier whose place that was. You know, I kind of found out whose it was. Didn't really have permission, but I knew they wasn't going to file charges on me if they caught us in there. <laughs> they let them dogs go in there. And, and uh, they didn't – I mean, they had they just about had it wore down, and, and them dogs caught that cat on the ground and uh, taped. Tate ran out there in the middle of the brush to go get it. It was pretty, it was a pretty good hunt. Where in Mexico do you hunt, Cody? Now you don't have to be exact. I hunt all over. Uh, you know, there's a lot of places in Mexico that uh, nobody has any business being there, much less a gringo. But, uh, you know, Coahuila, the state of Coahuila is pretty safe. State of Nuevo Leon. A lot of it just depends on where I can get the permits to hunt and, and uh, what time of year it is, but I spend, I spend, a, you know, I spend most of my time within 50 miles of the Rio Grande river, but just in Mexico. Mountain music <coughs> mules. Uh, I want to do the same thing. I want to have him on one time. He, he runs bears back in uh, Virginia, is it Virginia, Virginia, South Carolina, somewhere. I don't know, uh, you know, back, and he has a YouTube channel. He makes videos and stuff, really, really good videos. He's got a video where he's riding a mule that's bucking, and his son is on the on the fence talking, and it's it's got to be one of the best videos I've ever seen in my life. It's <laughs> absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Sit, sitting there watching his dad get his back broke. And commenting on it. It's, <laughs> it's, it's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> I appreciate you fellas taking the time to do this live feed. Oh, great. Someone had, someone had asked earlier if I had any lacy dogs. Uh, no, I I had someone when I hunted hogs with my dad. A I, I, couple that I had, I'd give them away. But do a lot of guys some, use them for blood trailing? You know, uh, yeah, they use them for a lot of things, and I'm sure they make some really good dogs, you know, but I've had probably three in my life, and, and I never had any luck with them. But, I mean, that, you know, I'm, I know that uh, Roy Hines and some of them guys had some dogs with some lacy mixed in them for blood dogs, and they made damn good ones. And, I, you know, I know people have had some hog dogs that were really good laces. 
but we just we never messed with them much. Well, what do you think, Cody? Uh, sounds good to me. Yeah, once once these pups get a little older and and start putting some some cats on them, it uh, give us a little something more to talk about. Try to take some good pictures and videos of them, and and uh, you know that that that's one thing that'll be pretty cool is watching, you know, something that you know, comes along taking taking some of your dogs and my dogs and crossing them up and and then being able to watch and see how they progress and how they do. And, yeah, uh, that'll be fun. That it's a I mean in a way it's a it's a we just I just don't know how it's going to how it, I you know with Jack, I don't think I don't think there's any problem with Jack's nose. I mean, he he trails just as as good as as anything right now. He's trashy and he loves jackrabbits. Yeah. <laughs> but Anyway, guys, if you uh, let us know if you want to see more, I mean, if you want to see me do this more and then Cody and I are, are planning on, you know, getting on here maybe once a month and 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 maybe if you guys have a subject or uh, a question or something, let us know and we'll try to cover it best we can. Yeah, and I'll try to do a better job of. of uh documenting some of these hunts especially well you, you know with with these pups in there you sent me some uh, pictures and i'm scared to death that and i am i'm scared to to try to bring them up now because when i did before i think that's what is that what killed the internet connection well, there we go that's tate in the middle right there that's tate that's tate and his daddy on the left yeah that was that was a pretty good trip well i did that that let me see if i can figure out how to do it again I'll tell you, a big bad lion hunter, I'll tell you the true story behind that lion. They found a kill. Okay. They found a kill, and they put one of them cell phone cameras on it. And uh, they said, we'll take a picture of the lion when it comes back. And they called me, and we, and we hunted and hunted bobcats while we were waiting for that lion to come back, and that lion never came back. And finally, about midnight, I said, screw it. Let's just go hunting over there. And, if, and, and in fact, I think Clinto was the one that said, screw it. Let's just go hunting over there. And uh, we went over there. And as we were pulling up, that camera went off. And that we opened the tailgate. That lion was 25, 30 yards from us when we dumped the tailgate and put the dogs. There's That's, uh, that's my wife and my oldest daughter there. My wife started that bobcat. They were all in a deer blind deer hunting. And my wife calls me on the phone. I just saw a bobcat. I just saw a bobcat. I mean, just as excited as an old dog starting with a ball mouth. Let me tell you. <laughs> and uh, it was, I think it was like 48 minutes from the time I put the dogs on the, from the time she saw it cross the road to the time I put the dogs on it. And, uh, and they, they trailed it pretty good. 48 minute old track. Let's see if this works. If we lose everybody, thanks for coming. But let's try this right here. Flying lion. Yeah, he jumped out. That was I a fun hunt. You know what, Cody? I tell you what, that country right there doesn't look any different than some of that desert I hunt out to the... Matter of fact, there's patches of it that looks exactly like that. And that's when I went out there and I caught that one bobcat. Because I thought, if the conditions get right, in those patches, it looks just like South Texas. Yeah. But it's not continuous. We call it brush piles. 
you know, and then, and then, so you go out there to those brush piles and. And I've, I've done that in West Texas out around Sanderson and stuff. And you can run them bobcats when they stay in them thickets like that. But if they leave those thickets, it's over with. And I, you know, kind of like you're saying that you can run them, but they leave that thicket. And uh, that's a, a running walker climbing a tree. That's a tree dog. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's Eve. She's real bad about it. I've tried to break her from doing it. And, and uh, I, uh, I tried to break her from doing it, and I haven't had much luck. It's pretty tough, but I'm worried she'll get hung one day. Yeah. And a lot of times, I mean, they'll you tree a line and and those dogs get to climb that tree and it sure cause those lines to jump a lot sooner. Yeah. Well, down here, you've seen how thick some of this brush is and you walk a mile through thick brush and just in time for a dog to jump that cat out of a tree, you get pretty upset about it. And uh, you may have to walk another mile just to get to the next tree. So that's uh, that's one of Chuck and Tom's cats there. Then they were down from Georgia. That's Hornet in the tree. That's one of Slade's dogs. Cool but, stuff. Yeah, it was it was uh, it was a good hunt. But yeah, man, no, it looks. It, I enjoyed it. Thanks for having me on. You bet. Thanks for coming on. I I, I you know it's. I enjoy talking to houndsmen from all over. So we'll start. We'll we'll start. Uh, uh, I'll start taking a little bit better record of some of the hunts, especially ones that that our uh, KV hounds pups are on. But KV hounds, that's our new deal on our trade. Our on our partner dogs, they're called KV hounds. I let you know. I let Cody's name be first. So yeah, it. Uh, friend of mine's from east texas a coon hunter's on here named alan smith and he just made a comment about telling my brother i said hello but it uh one of these days he's going to get a real job and when he does he wants to start cat hunting so we'll have to we'll have to get get a pup for him but there you go he uh now he's a he's a he's a good guy and a good friend from east texas that does a little bit of competition coon hunt. You think really? cat hunters are crazy. You, you go dip your toe in that world. And, uh, you know, I've been listening. Coon. Yeah. I've been listening to those guys. Uh, what was his name? Josh. I think he worked for Joy Dog Food. And I, had, I did a little live here. I don't know. It's been a month ago. And he got on here. And I listened to him when he was, he was doing the Houndsman XP podcast. And I really enjoyed listening to him talk to some of those guys. You know, those con they live in a different world than us, I guarantee. Yeah. No, and, that's, uh, that's, yeah. And I don't know a lick about it, but I, you know, they talked about, so they, about how those dogs go deep and how, like, the wild, they call them wild or crazy, that they're wild dogs that just go out and look for a coon and might swim a river or whatever. And they talked about that one that, treat the coon in the prison yard and they never could figure out how that dog got in the prison yard, but got in the prison yard and treated a coon. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's a good story. Yeah. That's, that's them dogs are, uh, you know, a, a different sport in its own, you know, and I was talking sure. earlier about coyote pin hunting and kind of breeding the nose out of dogs and, you know, to an extent, there's you know there's different traits that they like in dogs that sure. that you may not like if you were just a pleasure hunter. But when it, the difference in a, a dog striking a, a coon thirty seconds before another one could mean the difference in winning twenty thousand or forty thousand dollars. Exactly, I mean, big they, money. They get into it, man. I mean, oh, yeah. they they breed for specific things, and it's a uh, it's 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 a different world, it, but it all the money draws a lot of problems too, man. You get on some of them groups on Facebook, and it's nothing but guys 
mad at each other and arguing. You're you, the judge screwed me and you called my dog. And I mean, it can get pretty, it's not for the faint of heart. That's for sure. You got to be pretty thick skinned if you're going to be a competition coon hunter. I imagine anytime you get that much money involved in something, it can get pretty cutthroat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a, uh, it's pretty, pretty intense. I think I'll stick with bobcats yeah. by myself mostly. And, and, uh, nobody has to see all the bad stuff. They just get to see a picture of the cat in the tree. Man, I video all the bad stuff. I know you're not supposed to do that, but that's you know, why that I only a- got six pictures to share with you on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> One of my missions was to, to show people how hard it is to, to be a, a, to try to be a dry ground lion hunter. It's not, it's, it's a tough deal. Yeah. And I have, you you do it the old way too. Yeah. I have lots of respect for the guys who, you know, the Steve Smiths and, and Mike Roots and Larry Hendricks and Johnny Clumps and all those old guys that, that, you know, they didn't have all the modern things that we have. They didn't have the cell phone cameras that, you know, everybody used are just regular cell cameras and everything. They just, man, I remember talking to Steve Smith years ago and, and, and I asked him, you know, he, I asked him about a dog and he told me, <clears throat> I said, well, sir, I said, yeah, I said, I, I, I hunt dry ground. He said, you're not hunting dry ground unless you're hunting less than 6,000 foot elevation and riding 15 mile circles, six days a week. And yeah. I, said, oh, I said, I got two out of three. Yeah, six days a week. (laughs) But he didn't. He kind of. And then Henry McIntyre, you know, when I asked him how he hunted lions, I said, how do you hunt lions? He said, I take good dogs into good lion country and I make circles. Yeah. So. That's all it takes, you know. I mean, you take good dogs and spend a lot of time with them. But them guys are different, you know. Them old-timey hunters like that, Norman Davidson and Henry McIntyre, and, uh, uh, you know, they, 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 them guys didn't care about nothing but hounds, you know, and I, I, to give credit where credit would do. I mean, if you're going to have a very good pack of cat dogs and hunt very much, you're either going to be divorced or you're going to have a really good wife. And I was blessed with a really good wife. And, uh, but you got to spend so much time off in the woods. It's hard to do anything else. You know, I mean, them guys didn't care about making big money and didn't, most of them's divorced half a dozen times and kids yeah, they, moved on and, and, uh, you know, they gave up a lot to, 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 to do what they love to do. Yeah. You know, wife come in and say, if you go cat hunting tomorrow morning, I'm, I'm going to be gone when you get here, you know? Right. And she said, see you later. Thing. that's it yeah and nowadays with with you know everything's so expensive nowadays i mean it, it's it's tough i you know to the guys that truly love it enough to try to make a living doing it i tip my hat to them yeah. i really will well that's and, one of the struggles that i'm having right now is, is you know i'm 60 years old and i've never been able to hunt the way i want to hunt and you know i could hunt too when i was in the mountains i could hunt more but I still had a lot of responsibility and, uh, man, I tell you what, it, it, I, I have a business and, and, uh, I, I have a hard time giving up that money that I make. And it, 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 you know, you, you get to a certain point in your life and you realize you only know one way to make a living. And, uh, I've had a hard time giving that up. I mean, I got, I could make it, I could make it, but, uh, Maybe not, you know, at five dollar and sixty cent a gallon diesel, I might not be able to make it. But no, that's it's tough. It's tough. Of course, them guys all sold hunts, you know, so they had income from their dogs. Yeah, yeah, they they did things to make ends meet. But I remember yeah. seeing Henry where he lived when I first met him. That yeah, that house wasn't as big as this room I'm in right now. You know, and they they sailed them guys like Dale Lee and. You know, hell, Norman Davidson, he didn't have a house when he got old. 
his niece let him let him live in a, one of the trailers at her trailer park and he uh he was divorced and married again and the house that he lived in was his his wife's house it wasn't his house and when she died uh you know he didn't have a she he didn't have a place to live anymore and you know they say odell lee was just a half-assed bum in his old age didn't oh, have yeah. nowhere to go you know lived with lived wherever there was a bed you know somebody let him stay you know he didn't have have nothing really i caught a bobcat thursday morning and caught a bobcat the previous saturday and it is hot it's bad hot you got to be real careful you get it you get a dog killed but as norman would say it uh it's hot on those cats too and the 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 trick with it is is it's uh uh your dogs have to be in shape and you know you lay your dogs up and get busy and and don't take them hunting for three weeks and then take them out on a hot morning and hey, you know you can you can sure kill a dog real quick but if if you don't stop hunting them and you keep them in tip top shape you you'll be all right but it's tough it's tough it uh you don't get to hunt as long you know nine o'clock in the morning and you're done hunting and that makes it makes it pretty hard but lately i've been trying to start hunting about at least by four sometimes by two uh you know last time i was down in mexico the other day we started hunting at midnight hunted through through daylight so it uh yeah it it is hot though air conditioned i wouldn't want to be doing it on mule that's for sure if i come out and go hunting with you i'm gonna have to get a selfie stick with a little fan on the end of it or something because i'm hey, used to I'm used to my technology, man. I got a, I got my Jeep. I sit in with the air condition blowing and watch YouTube videos while I'm hunting. I got to be entertained. You better have a USB port on that saddle for me. Hey, I bought you a mule too. I should say I was given a mule. And uh, yeah, so now sure. I got a mule you can ride. I'm going to come and you know out what we're gonna do? Do you know what we're going to do? <clears throat> we're going to wait until the weather's nice and it's cool. And you're going to come down here and we're going to take your dogs out and we're going to hunt your dogs for like three days and then we'll switch out and then take my dogs out and hunt for three days. I'm ready. And that'll be fun. We'll make, we'll video it and we'll share it. If it, you know, as, lo as long as I don't, as long as I don't look too bad. Well, you ain't going to worry about you looking bad because my dogs are going to be sore footed in them rocks after the first day. They're going to be creeping behind their truck, just barely getting along. So you'll look pretty good on that one. But, you know, I think that would be fun to do. And then you come down and hunt in South Texas and do the same thing. Yeah. I, and, I, I, uh, you know, let everybody kind of see the difference that two different types of dogs do in different country you know, and versus their home country. Well, you know, I, when I went down there and hunted with you before, I brought <clears throat> Dan and I think I brought two pups or three pups, three young dogs. And those three pups, they, they wouldn't go. They wouldn't, you know, they go with my dogs, but they wouldn't go into that thick brush. I remember Al ran out there one time, your dogs or something opened up on something and Al, you know, and Al's a pretty good trail dog now. But he, I remember him running out in that brush and coming back to me and just like looking at me like, you're crazier than hell. I ain't that place we hunted was bad prickly pear. And them dogs got to be used to it or, or they won't. They won't. Uh, they won't handle it very well. And it's the same thing. I mean, I'd go hunting out there with Ty Vic with dogs that I knew were good cat dogs good cat dogs and we'd be riding horseback and them dogs wouldn't leave the back of the horse they just was wasn't used to the rocks wasn't used to the cliffs wasn't used to the drop-offs wasn't used to the horse and uh they wouldn't hunt they just weren't sure what they were out there for it made me look stupid made me look i mean it was embarrassing and uh but it is 
you know, it is what it is. The dog's got to be acclimated to, you know, everybody that tells you that this is the best dog in the world and dog has to be acclimated to where he, where he's hunting. Yeah. And, uh, you I, know, and that's, that's all there is to it. I got to try out some of my stuff here. Okay, Cody. There you go. All right. That's all. Well, <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> Chuck, and Tate, and Tom, and Alan, and at least I had some friends on here that'll make fun of me. As soon as we get off, my phone will be ringing. Till oh, and it's, I've already been getting all kinds of messages. Somebody said you were going to sing. Yeah, yeah, that ain't going to happen. I can tell you that right now. And I'm kind of disappointed. I start uh, some of them videos. I go to yelling at old Ricochet. It might sound like I'm singing. Fossil Creek Kennels got to have some, got to have some hard nosed hardy walkers to hunt down here in Texas. Where are you from, Fossil Creek Kennels? Next time, next time we're on here, Brett, I'll tell you the story of uh, Chuck and Tom's Havelina. So, oh, okay, I know, it's, I know it's getting late. And we're fixing to get off. It's a pretty good story, but uh, we were, we ran into a pack of javelinas, and, and uh, it was it was pretty good. Javelinas went to charge in, and I handled I handed Tom a bullet. Said shoot, it was, it was pretty good. I will leave him on a cliffhanger. Then next time Cody yeah. joins me, we'll have to tell that story. Fort Worth, Fort Worth, uh, uh, um. Derek Edwards is from Fort Worth. He's a cat hunter. He hunts in Oklahoma. In fact, in fact, Derek, this next weekend I'm going lion hunting. I've kind of got a Brett going on. I've got a, a lion that I've trailed about 10 times now. Seen him cross the road, dogs on his rear end, and and, and seen him cross the road and, and never get a bark. It, it, it's 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 been a bad experience for me and that lion, but it's hanging out in one little area. Killed a colt not too long ago and a few deer. So I'm going to try and see if I can get on a little bit better trail on him this weekend. And then the following weekend, Derek Edwards from Oklahoma is going to come down and go, oh, that is Derek. Oh, Bobcat 101 is Derek, but I was asking who Fossil Creek was. Anyway, Derek's coming down to go hunting with me. Uh, uh, not this weekend, but next weekend. So we're gonna go. We're gonna go give it a whirl. I've got a a dog or two that that I'm gonna give him and and uh, let him try them out and see how they do. I got a I got a very 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 well bred female dog, and our litter mate is is bang up and uh but she's kind of kind of shy and i took her hunting just a couple of times and i picked her up and she went to sling in her head when i was trying to get her out of the truck and she hit me it, i mean head butted me i mean right in the face hard it hurt and i you know kind of got a little angry and i mean i i threw her down to grab my face i thought i was bleeding and and when I threw her down, she landed on her side. And, and uh, that's been probably five months ago or four months ago. I don't know how long it's been, but she won't forget it, man. I can't, she don't, she won't, uh, she won't forgive me. And uh, so, you know, she'll come around my girls and someone else, but she, she, she won't forgive me. And I didn't do it on purpose. I didn't mean to hurt her, but. I mean, she just, she, she went to slinging that head like crazy and she hit me hard. But ever since then, she won't, I couldn't take her hunting because I couldn't catch her to put her back in the truck. And, uh, so anyways, we're going to see if, we're going to see if Derek can, uh, buddy up and make friends with her or not. She's just too good of a dog too. She's too well bred to not do something with.
just South Texas running walkers. That's no particular bloodline. Reuben was always real big on that shadow bread kind of bloodline, but uh, they're kind of all the same. They're all pretty, pretty closely related. That's what, uh, this is what I kind of think happened too. Don't lie, your wife knocked in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she'll, she'll do it, I guarantee you. All right, Cody. We'll see you guys. Thanks, thanks again. Thanks for everything. Everybody, this, this I'm going to save this replay, Hold but on. I'm going to put it on my other little channel here. Anyway. I'll put it on that interview stories and tales. The written, we'll keep it on there. And maybe if if the audio is good enough, I'll see if uh, if uh, W Supply wants to use it on their podcast. So uh, yeah, be and if if anybody has any questions or anything, y'all can y'all can uh, shoot me a message on Facebook Messenger or whatever. So and I'm kicked off of Facebook. I, yeah, Brett's got into Asian porn over there. Yeah, it seems, <laughs> seems like Facebook doesn't approve of Asian porn. So, yeah, somebody <laughs> somebody hacked Brett's YouTube and uh, posted some inappropriate material and got got Brett kicked off Facebook. <laughs> you know what irritates me about that as much as anything is you go through all the trouble. I've been you know I've been posting things and you know mostly on my born one hundred years too late Facebook page and I share things and. You know, you work and you've got all those memories on there and all those people that you haven't, you don't know how to get a hold of them any other way. And you get kicked off and there is nobody you can contact to get back on. And that all that stuff I had on there is just, I guess it's just history now. And I'm, there's got to be a way, you would think, especially with, especially with as, as, as popular as people being hacked has become. But generally, you see people have to make a new profile, but you would think they'd have a way to, to, to sort that out. Well, all they'd have to do, I, I clicked a button that said, please review, you know, and they were going to review it. All they would have to do is go back and look at all my other posts. I've yeah. never posted anything like that before. Yeah. I, it, it, it's it's kind of stupid, but I, I, I really just detest Facebook. I yeah. Mean, they're... they're Anyway, so I don't even know if I'll ever be back on there or not. I like Instagram. I do some Instagram stuff and some, put some pictures up and everything. And, and then, of course, I like YouTube. I like to video what I do and share it with everybody. I don't use Instagram as much. My Instagram is, uh, is Wildcat Hounds. Wildcat. And, but I don't, I don't post to it as much as I do, as, as I I, do Facebook. I, I probably just, should. But. Yeah, I just started posting more to it. Because I finally figured out how to, uh, really, how to do it right, and and with the like the reels and stuff, you can post little videos and I don't know. Yeah. Stuff. But uh, YouTube still, I, you know, I don't even. It's hard to believe that a guy my age can even do what I do with YouTube. So. Yeah. Anyway, and if people like, like I always hate to do this, but if people like this kind of thing and they want to see see me go out and talk to more guys like Cody and everything. You know, you can join my Patreon or uh, my channel membership on my YouTube channel and, you know, help buy me a, a, a gallon of diesel to go somewhere. <laughs> well, I, and I can and I can tell you this, too, guys, that, you know, it costs a lot of money to travel around and 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 do these interviews. And, you know, I'm nobody special, but uh a lot of these old timers, you can't get them in front of a laptop with a WAMP cam and do this from 200 miles away. And, uh, you know, and a lot of them old timers ain't going to be around much longer. So I know I really appreciate a lot of the work that you do, Brett. Well, and, uh, and getting, you know, and me and Brett, we're going to interview Norman Davidson and, uh, frozen, and COVID man. struck and we never got to, and that's a prime example. You know, that's a prime example. So uh, one of these days it'll be too late and and them, them old timers will be gone. So anybody I, that wants to help out with with doing that stuff, it's, it's money well spent. I can tell you one thing. 
Brett don't make no money <laughs> by the time he's done the number of hours that he spends putting them interviews together. So, Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, my my picture's frozen on my screen. Your picture's froze, but oh, I well, thought maybe you fell asleep or something. <laughs> it's past my bedtime already, so. Yeah, so, well, but all, I can do the young guys, you know, uh, you know, I call Cody a young guy, but everybody I can. I got some other guys lined up that I can do these little deals with, and, and I enjoy it. And everybody, I did a little poll on my community page on my on my YouTube, and they said Sunday night was the best, so that'll work. If everybody likes it, let us know. Send me messages, you know, whatever, you know, try to get a hold of me and let me know. If you have ideas of guys that, uh, that would be good to talk to, then let me know. Give me some names and contact information. And, uh, and me and Cody are going to try to do this once a month. So maybe more often than that. I mean, but we'll probably schedule one once a month so everybody knows. Yeah, we'll start getting some, some footage of these pups. You know, it'll be something that I think a lot of people could benefit from. Uh, you know, seeing these running dogs and these pot lickers, tree dogs, and the crosses of – crossbreeds and and how they do you know it'll be a it'll be a pretty pretty entertaining experiment anyways ah there i am there you are but you're gone i'm good because i'm gone anyways all right guys thanks for coming by we'll see y'all thanks much thanks cody